Kale Swayam Rupa Kada Mayam Tadati Shapadantikam Bande Hang Sri Guru Sri Jatapada Kamalang Sri Guru Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sadrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitamstam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lolita Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha <coughs> He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kamsana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari Prashapanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hori Priye Manshako Pitarubhyascha Kripa Sindho Pyevacha Patita nam pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo namo namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Hare. <coughs> Patichutam tishtati dishta rakshitam grahestitam tad vihatam vinashati jivatyanatopi tadikshito vane grahe bhigupto sya ato najivati. <coughs> this verse chosen for me today, was spoken by Yamaraj and is cited by Hiranyakashipu. The context is that Hiranyaksha was killed by the personality of Godhead in the form of a boar. And Therefore, the Hiranyaksha's the sons and wives and mother were all lamenting. And Hiranyakashipu uh, took it upon himself to give, give them good spiritual instructions about the eternal, eternality of the soul and so on. In this connection, he cited the example of a an old history of the king of Ushinara, Ushinara province, who was killed in, in war, and his wives were lamenting over the body and, and wouldn't release it. And the sun is going down and the body is supposed to be cremated before the day is over, but they, they're just lamenting over their uh, husband. And so they're laments were heard even by Yamaraj and Yamaraj then took the form of a small boy and came to them and gave them instructions. Easier to take instructions from a small boy sometimes. So that instruction, this, so this is part of that instruction. The example is, examples are within our experience. Sometimes we lose our money, right in the, out in the open where anyone could walk away with it, and somehow or other the money is returned to us. And sometimes, on the other hand, we keep our money very securely at home, and somehow the money is lost. Uh, so, therefore, everything uh, is, that's described Adishta uh, rakshita. The money is returned if 
destiny is on our side for returning it. And <coughs> and it's lost. If uh, destiny or the hand of the personality of Godhead is going the other way. So finally everything is up to the uh, supervision of the personality of, of Godhead. Uh, what is that? Jari uh, Dako? No, 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 no. Uh, someone who Krishna wants to kill, no one can protect. And someone who wants to protect, uh, no one can kill. Mare Krishna Rakeke, Rake Krishna Mareke. Yeah, thank you. If someone wants to protect, if Krishna wants to protect someone, no one can kill him. If Krishna wants to kill someone, no one can protect him. I was uh, noticing in this verse this. Uh, that the money kept at home securely can be lost. Uh, this reminded me of a topic I'm working on, uh, writing a book on, namely the Vanaprastasha. The Vanaprastasha means the ashram after the grihastha ashram, after family life. It's retirement. According to mm, Shastra, cited many times by Srila Prabhupada, Panchashurtam Vanam Vrajade. After the age of 50, one should leave householder life and accept the Vanaprastha ashram. There's a purport in Srimad Bhagavatam, or it could be Chaitanya Charitamrita, now that I'm thinking of it. It's Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada says the young boys and girls in the Hare Krishna movement who are now in householder life will one day have to accept the Vanaprastha ashram. Uh, so this Vanaprastha ashram is not some historical curiosity from Vedic times. It's part of the social system that Srila Prabhupada wanted us to accept. The, yes, Vanaprastha In previous ages, people used to go to the forest, literally. Prithu Maharaj did that, Dhritarashtra did that, many did that. In the present age, the forest is not so practical. But Prabhupada said one may go to Vrindavan, the best forest. Uh, or there are so many holy places, uh, even temples of, of Krishna. So, but the point is that one should get out of home. One should get out of home. A grahastha ashram is not meant to last throughout one's whole life. In a, no photography please, no videography, no photography, phones in the pocket. Thank you, we have an official photographer, it's all handled. The, in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam concerning Dhritarashtra, uh, Srila Prabhupada makes a, a strong point. Dhritarashtra was living at home, not at home exactly, after the disaster of the battle of Kurukshetra. He was living in the palace of Yudhisthira Maharaj as the respected elderly uncle of the Pandavas. And after Vidura, who himself had accepted Vanaprastha life and gone on pilgrimage, after Vidura returned, he told Dhritarashtra, you're living just like a dog. Uh, eating the scraps thrown to you by Bhima, who uh, killed your, so many of your favorite sons. Your teeth are loose, you're, you're hard of hearing, you're blind since birth, and keep growing blinder. 
your liver's not working, you're coughing up mucus. Your body's like an old rag. Uh, it's going to be finished. And you're so foolish that you don't see it. So get out. Uh, as they say in America, we say, get out while the getting's good. Which means get out while you can. So, uh, Dhritarashtra did that. By the mercy of Vidura, he was able to leave that so-called secure, comfortable palace life and attain liberation. In the purport in, in those chapters, Srila Prabhupada says that to stay in householder life till the very end of one's days is the grossest form of degradation. And if I'm not wrong, he puts it in italic. Uh, the grossest form of degradation. Uh, Panchashordam vanam prajate. Prajate is imperative. Prabhupada makes that point when he talks about initiation. Tadvigyanartam saguru meva abhigach chait. It's the vidhilin, or the imperative form of the verb, used when something is mandatory. Not when it's you may, but when you must. So here also the same form is used. Panchashordam uh, vanam prajate. One must uh, get out of family life at the mature time. The <coughs> there are many. <coughs> oh, poor Dhritarashtra. There are many misgivings that may be set or give pause to a person considering accepting Vanaprastha life. And one, uh, one is security. Uh, I'm, I have a home where I have security, I have my family, I have my pension, I have my doctor a few blocks away, I have this, I have that. So my, I have security. Why would I go someplace else where everything is uncertain? And here we find that no, we don't have security. We imagine we have security. Uh, the death doesn't respect the fence around our home. Uh, at any time, any calamity could come upon us within the security of our homes. Uh, we can be disabled, we can be paralyzed, we can die. So, uh, there's no, the, the, the illusion of security is there in my home. The illusion of security. There is no security anywhere in this material world. The only security is the security given by Krishna. Konteya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashati. Take shelter of me, I'll protect you. Don't worry. Uh, otherwise, uh, the security is Maya's arrangement. What is that? Prakritim uh, mohanim shritaha. We take shelter of material arrangements, but they're illusory. They can't protect anyone. So, security is found at the lotus feet of Krishna. Uh, and therefore one is advised strongly that at the age of 50, uh, sometimes Prabhupada says, by the age of 50, sometimes says, sometimes he gives like an extra year or two, you know. But basically, 50 is the cutoff time. 
By that time, one should get out of family life and move on. Family life is very good, but it's not meant to be permanent. Just as uh, high school life, what you call it high school life? Anyways, school life. It's very good. But when you're 40, we don't expect to see you sitting behind a little desk with a chalkboard in front of you, uh, hearing about the alphabet from the teacher. It's time to move on. So family life has its, its place. Uh, those who are not, mm, who find brahmacharya life difficult, uh, can accept the grihastha ashram. Uh, but then after a certain time, uh, they should get out because grihastha life entails entanglement, attachment, Every grahasta, how do you find the time to balance your material life and your spiritual life? You know, I've, there's no counting the number of grahastas who ask that question. How do I find the time for my sadhana? How do I this and that and this and that? Because there's so many uh, duties. And on top of that, uh, or among them, one has to work hard, which is maybe when you're young, it's challenging. You build a career. When you're old, it's just a drag. And the old man is dragging himself to work, doing nothing of any importance, even imagining that he's important. Maybe if he has a high post, he stays in that post because if I were to leave, what would happen to the, the corporation, the organization, the, the responsibility? So he stays in. Politicians. But one is advised, get out, get out, get out. <coughs> Attachment is there naturally between husband and wife, uh, male and female, pumsa striya. So uh, one has to break that attachment. Asanga shastrena dridhena chitva. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, this is the upside down tree, the tree that doesn't exist in fact, or the tree which entangles us in its complexities but isn't substantial. So to get free from that complicated banyan tree, one should cut oneself off with the weapon of detachment. Tatapadam tatparimargatamyam and go proceed on the path back to Godhead. Not that one can't make progress in family life, uh, progress in Krishna consciousness, but at the uh, appropriate stage, the Shastra's advice, no, now don't make progress in Krishna consciousness at home. Get out. Get out, get out. Uh, that's a great opportunity <coughs> for the older man to uh, refresh his spiritual life, to find new energy, and to uh, begin to uh, render greatest, greater service to the personality of Godhead. The um, our acharyas have set this example to leave the supposed security of home and entrust themselves to the protection of the personality of Godhead for rendering greater devotional service. All right, I think I'll stop there and see what kind of questions there might be. Yes. I think there's a microphone for you. I hope there's a microphone for you. There is a microphone. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for the discourse. Um, there appears to be a prevailing philosophy in ISKCON that it's okay or that it's acceptable for senior advanced 
even we see senior advanced devotees to remain in the Grihasta ashram. And the prevailing of philosophy appears to be that, well, if it's not a hindrance, I mean, if it's not a... Uh, um, hindrance, uh, yeah. Uh, hindrance, yeah. Um, then that's acceptable. So my question is, what constitutes a hindrance? First of all, let's talk about what's acceptable. Acceptable means acceptable to whom? And I, my job is not to sit here and say, what you're doing is acceptable, what you're doing is unacceptable, you're good, you're not good. That's everyone's individual, and it's not my prerogative to criticize anyone's particular path in spiritual life. So let's, let's start with that. <clears throat> the next thing is that Prabhupada many times makes this point that we should get out of family life. Uh, family life itself, we should, we, it's all right to stay in family life if it's not a hindrance. That means it's a hindrance. Because I have to make up this idea that, well, if it's not a hindrance, then I can stay. Just the, my unwillingness to leave is evidence that it's a hindrance. Hmm? Now, there, in fairness, there may be particular individual circumstances where it, it doesn't make sense to leave, where there's some very particular reason. Uh, I'm leaving that aside. Let's take the, the general case, the, the uh, case that applies to most or nearly all devotees. Uh, when we enter the household life, no one says it's a hindrance. Hmm? When we entered household life, we didn't say it's a hindrance, I'm not gonna do it. We said, anyway, It'll be an opportunity for advancement in Krishna consciousness. So now we should leave householder life in the same spirit and accept the Vanaprastashram. It won't be a hindrance, it'll be further progress. Hmm? We're advised, do it. Shastra Pramanam uh, By following Shastra, one gets everything right. And by neglecting Shastra, na susidim avapnoti na sukham na paramgatim. One doesn't become happy. One doesn't become, achieve perfection. Uh, one doesn't go back to Godhead. Atasmat Shastra pramanam te karya karya. So we should decide what to do by the direction of Shastra, Shastra and the spiritual master. Hmm. Maharaj. Bhakti Bhai Maharaj. So the, the Agrihasa is supposed to leave home. And uh, what, is, what is your advice? for the next step. Now he's leaving home. He's elderly and uh, his health might be fragile and he might feel being kicked in the butt to, to, take, to take shelter underneath a bridge close to the main <laughs> train station. <laughs> so what is your idea of what's the practical next step? What's practical next step? There's a lot of steps one can take, but Prabhupada basically gave, from what I've seen in his books, three systems of Vanaprastha life. <clears throat> one is, you go to a holy place, Vrindavan, Mayapur, hmm? even there may be temples, of Iskand temples, and live in a holy place. Uh, husband and wife can live together in the holy place or the husband may live alone in the holy place while the wife stays at home with the grown children. But that's one system. Go to, uh, as Prabhupada said, 
uh, the, the forest now living on roots and berries, that's not going to work for us. But you can go to Vrindavan. And Prabhupada said that he especially established that Krishna Balaram guest house so that elderly people could retire uh, in Vrindavan. Vrindavan, as he said, is especially meant for retirement. Now it's sort of conceived as a place for uh, uh, young marrieds. But Prabhupada's idea was that Vrindavan was for especially retiring from this material world. So regardless of the young marrieds, uh, retired people can go to Vrindavan or Mayapur. And I know uh, several um, Iskan Vaishnavas who did exactly that. They've, um, I can give you histories, but they've, they went to Vrindavan. And these days, Vrindavan is not so hard to live in. Uh, back in the old days of uh, no heat, no hot water, uh, electric cold water in the winter and all of that. Uh, but these days it's uh, quite comfortable, Vrindavan. But still it's Vrindavan. <clears throat> so one can go to a holy place. That's one item. And by the way, our health is fragile. It'll be fragile at home, it'll be fragile anywhere we go. Uh, our, fragile health, our health is fragile because we're getting old. And the next stage is that we're going to die. So we have a choice. We can die at home in family life, in, uh, or we can uh, retire and make further progress. Death is sure. Second system. One can travel to holy places. Vidura did that. Uh, other devotees have done that. Uh, there are so many holy places, so many, so many, so, so many. And one becomes purified by visiting these holy places. Vidura wanted to get free from all the gunk that it's accumulated from the association of the Korovas and polit politics and palace intrigue. So he went to travel in different holy places. Uh, so that's a second system. The husband or the husband and wife together can travel to holy places. In 1985-86, when our Padayatra was um, walking to celebrate the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, some elderly people joined in Gujarat and stayed for the whole year, year, year and a half. Uh, elderly people. And these are people who probably wouldn't have gone outside of their district. And they were going to Trivandrum and to Kanyakumari and to Rangakshetra Ranga and to finally to Mayapur. Uh, what an experience. So the, that's the second system. And the third system is that the man may leave home for some time, some months, travel, preach, then come back, spend some time at home, sort of see how things are going, make whatever adjustments, tend to things, go out again, preach, travel, again come back, see that everything's okay, again go out. And then Prabhupada said, and one time he just never comes back. So these steps one can take. Uh, from a practical point of view, uh, just from a fundamental point of view, uh, the, the, there, you know, what are the rules for the Vanaprastha ashram? There's not lots and lots and lots of rules, but the, the principal rule is no sex. Uh, no sex. In, the, in, in three ashrams, there's no sex. In the Brahmacharya life, Vanaprastha life, and Sannyas life. Only in Grahastha life is there sex, and that also is only for having Krishna conscious children. So if one is in Grahastha life and uh, is approaching the age of, uh, first of all, if we're even approaching um, older, you know, 40 and so on, what do you want to have children for? You know, so that they can be 15 when you're 65. 
you know, and then you say, well, I still have children, I have to send them to college, so I have to work. The whole thing is out of joint. One is advised, in, as a young man, get married. If you're going to ma marry 20, 25, have your children, be done with it. Then they're grown up, you're 50, the whole thing works. But, you know, I get married again when I'm 48 and I have uh, more children. It's just not advisable. So this is a practical thing. You know, your doctor won't object. It doesn't jeopardize your pension plan. If you're still having sex, stop. That's uh, one answer. Yes. I think Kambi Chandramaraj has something you want to say. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we have a couple. Uh, you're not clicked. Or you're clicked, but it's not working. Or you can just say what you'd like and Hare Krishna. Okay. Oh, here we are. Oh, sorry. We have couples that are practically 70. They've been married like 40, 50 years. And been practically more than Vanaprasa their whole time. And there's still a team for preaching. Uh, you know, they don't have family life. They hardly ever did. So. What's their situation? They're vanaprastas. They're already vanaprastas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we do have quite a few of them. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Kutu Shabha and his wife, there, there are many. Uh, they're quite a number. Uh, Purva of and... Purva and, you know, and Kamalini. Uh, yeah. So that's ideal. You don't... You Practically, you're detached from, from early on. Not that at 50, oh, what am I going to do now? Da, 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 da. They're already preaching and, and engaged in Krishna's service and happy. So that's already vanaprastha life. And you talk to them, they're not suffering, they're not, oh, blah, blah, blah. This is happy life. Thank you. Yes. But they should at one point separate, no? Well, that's, yes. <laughs> The, I don't talk about that. That's sannyas. I don't talk about sannyas these days. I talk about vanaprastha life. Because sannyas is, you know, you take, except vanaprastha life, Krishna will tell you what to do next. But let's get to the stage three. You know, we're counting one, two, now three. And then maybe there'll be four. But let's get to three at least. <clears throat> Prabhupada seems <clears throat> less emphatic about the necessity of sannyas in my reading. It's sort of, um, one should ex accept vanaprastha life and ideally accept sannyas. So I'm not going to, anyway, I'm not going to get into all that territory. Um, when we have lots and lots of vanaprastas, then I'll start giving the sannyas class. By the way, um, for those of I've been here some days, some of you um, may have seen with me my um, companions, I am Jyoti Prabhu from uh, London, uh, who's sitting in, in the front row. His, um, his son has uh, just started his career, and so Swayam am Jyoti Prabhu is moving forward in his career. He's... Uh, spending half the week in London, half the week in Leicester, and then from time to time traveling out to uh, Germany and here, there, and everywhere. And um, it's not terrible, is it? He's, he's, he's having a, a wonderful time. Uh, so much better than, than... Of course, he wasn't just sitting at home. He was doing service. Uh, he's a serious devotee. But for those who are doing service, 
you can do more service. And his wife's also happy. She's serving London Ishra half the time and Radhagokulananda at the manor half the time. Uh, so it's not uh, imaginary. Even Vanaprastas are not imaginary. You can see them. <laughs> Rarely, but we're starting to see them. Thank you, Swam Jyoti Prabhu. Uh, yes. Uh, the microphone has some... Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're in charge. I make too many decisions. There's lots of hands over there. Thank you so much. I want to ask um, regarding um, this prerogative that if Krishna wants to protect us, then there's nothing or no one that can kill us. And I saw a lot of devotees that based on this prerogative take a lot of risks. They drive at twice the limit of speed. They are sick and not taking any medicine or so on. How far are we supposed to go with the risks that we are taking and rely on Krishna to protect us? Well, if you take that kind of risk, then Krishna may desire to kill you. <laughs> We should be a little prudent. Yes. Hare Krishna. Someone told me recently that there is a system um, that sannyasis for the Brahmins, they, sh they are supposed to take... Sanyas. Yeah, there's, it's supposed to be, and Prabhupada mentioned this, that there are, for the Brahmins, there's four ashrams, for the Kshatriyas, three, up through Vanaprastha, for the Vaishas, two, up through family life, uh, and for the, what, for the Shudras, it's just, um, no, uh, not even Brahmachari life, just family life. <clears throat> but the Vaishnavas are supposed to be transcendental. If you want, you can, you can go there, you can say, but I'm a Vaisha, I'm a Vaisha. You know, you can go to death, I'm a Vaisha, I'm a Vaisha, and stay in family life, but you're not doing yourself a favor. This is healthy, this is, if I dare say, fun. This is liberating. This is good. It's not that by, you know, you know, that we should, something that we should resist because it's so terrible. Uh, it's good for us. Prabhupada was, uh, came from a Vaisha family. Right? His, his father was a cloth merchant, am I right? So uh, if he had said, well, you know, for the Vaishas there's only family life, where would we be? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I'm very thankful that you are talking about Vana Prashta. Uh, I was looking through uh, during the last two years for a Vana Prashta ashram in Germany or in, in Europe, and there is no Vana Prashta ashram in the temples available. And uh, therefore, the Lord was so kind to offer me recently a flat close uh, close to temple. That means. You must earn money, you, you must have uh, money, and this is also practical to have some uh, savings. Uh, how, it is, also how can I, as I concentrate on, on sadhana, as I only on Krishna, as I no working outside or uh, something like this, but how can I proper live uh, Vana Prashta life when it's necessary to care for the financial uh, basis also? Yeah. The this is a, a large topic. Um, 
fi financial planning and finance. One thing is, well, yeah, let me say this. Um, actually, you, that shouldn't be, it shouldn't have to be your worry. It may, in the present circumstance, have to be your worry, but it shouldn't have to be your worry. Ideally, there should be grown sons who are responsible and take the responsibility in their absence. Uh, the Grahasta community should take the responsibility. It means there, there should be an elder brother, or sometimes if the husband dies young, the girl goes back to her father, or in, if there are none of those options, it's the responsibility of the Grahastas. It's the responsibility of the Grahastas. Grahastas have a license for sense enjoyment. You know, brahmacharis, vanaprastas, and vanaprastas eat on, you know, they dress in tree bark and live on roots and berries. Um, the, it's the grahastas who are the earning section. And it's their responsibility. The license is not a free license. Prabhupada mentions many times the one section of society, the grahastas, are responsible for taking care of the other three sections, the brahmacharis, the vanaprastas, and the sannyasis. Um, so in the absence of other arrangements, family arrangements. We're not big on extended families in our Western context. The Grasta community has, should be taking the responsibility. Not that elderly women, you know, should be thinking, how do I support myself? The Grastas should be thinking, how do we serve this Vaishnavi, that Vaishnavi, this devotee, that devotee? Um, that's why one reason why I'm so, um, well, we won't talk about my prejudices, but if you have money in your pocket, before you think about feeding the poor, feeding the victims of uh, natural disasters, wars, uh, da -da 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 so that ISKCON can uh, be seen as a, a, a great institution, before you take your money out of your pocket for that, think about taking care of the Vaishnavas. Think about serving the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Uh, that would be my suggestion. And you know, you're like in the first generation of um, retired people. Um, you know, first and you know, not too fa much past first. ISKCON has been around only for 50 years. People should take become Vanaprastas at 50, so even ISKCON has is only just reached 50 not long ago. So it's not, what shall we say, highly evolved as an organization, but this should be on its priority list. Um, and let me rephrase that, not on ISKCON's priority list. In ISKCON as an institution uh, may have difficulty with arranging for supporting elderly people and retired people and so on. But the Grahasta community, ISKCON consists of people. And among those people are Grahastas, and those Grahastas, among the Grahastas are people who are prosperous Grahastas. I understand if you're a poor Grahasta, you don't have any money, then you know, you're not the person I, I really need to speak to. But there are Grahastas who, have, who make money. And this should be on our priority list. Uh, Prabhupada one time was sitting in an airport, um, a plane for awaiting a, a departure, and some devotees brought, offered him some sweets, Prabhupada took a little bit, and then he said, distribute. And the devotees said, um, you know, it's like to the devotees, to the people in the airport, Prabhupada said to the devotees, Prabhupada said, charity begins at home. So that's where charity should begin. When you read about uh, charity in goodness, passion, and ignorance, charity in goodness is to the right people in the right place at the right time. And the right people, Prabhupada says again and again and again, are the Brahmins and Vaishnavas. If we're giving charity, we should especially give charity to the Vaishnavas above all. So, <clears throat> For the Varnashram system to <coughs> work well, it 
this is part of what we need to do. We'll need some brave souls to accept the Vanaprastha ashram and move forward and trust Krishna. And we need some grahastas who take responsibility. I know, um, to cite one example, um, Kesha Bharati Marj's former wife was um, taken care of till she expired by a, a very responsible uh, grass to man in uh, New York, Sachi Sutta, a disciple of Satsuru Braj. So that's exemplary. It, you know, I'm making money. It's not just for me. It's Krishna's money. And one becomes purified. One becomes purified. One's, one's income becomes purified. One's heart becomes purified by charity. Yagyadana tapajaiva pavanani manishita. So the grasthas should be thinking in this way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Jayadeva Swami, the Devamrita Swami was um, introducing something like the, the contemporary Vedic ashram for preaching purposes to get an orientation if one wants to go to the Brahmachari ashram or to the Grihastha ashram. And for someone who joined a little bit later and went through the Brahmachari ashram, it's maybe also something, it would be good to have something in between the Grihastha ashram and the Vanaprastha ashram. Could you imagine something like this? Does it make no. sense? <laughs> the Vanaprastha is the in-between in ashram. The Vanaprastha ashram is the in-between ashram. Uh, not that we have to establish an in-between, in-between. But there are different steps one can take while in the Grahastha ashram so that one is moving toward the Vanaprastha ashram. It shouldn't be just that on... Uh, till the age of 50, one is kind of a happy-go-lucky, no, not happy, you know, a happy, uh, anyway, uh, enjoying family life, and then, boom, your 50th year go, comes, and now, you, you, you know, you're going to head off to the forest, and you're going to be austere, and you're going to give up sex, and you're going to, no. Um, we see it coming, right? This makes a difference. It's not that we sh it should be like a surprise that when you reach 50, now suddenly something has to happen that you didn't know about and, and are totally unprepared for. Uh, we should be moving. You know, those of you, everyone here came who came from outside, you made some arrangements. Um, you, maybe you, you, you did something with your uh, commitments at work. You did, might have done something with your commitments with your children. You did things like buy plane tickets or train tickets or uh, got your car ready to go. You, you know, all the things that you did. It's not just that you woke up in the morning and said, okay. <laughs> it took some planning. You, you paid your, I think there's some registration and all of that. So you, you did all of those things. And therefore now you can sit here happily and chant Hare Krishna and take darshan of Lord Nishingadev and do all those wonderful things. But if you just decided on the morning of Nishinga Chaturdasi, it would be really rough. So in the Grahasta Ashram, one should be taking steps so that there's a, the easiest po or most, yeah, easiest possible transition to the Vanaprastha Ashram, or a natural transition. Uh, as uh, Kavi Chandra Maharaj was saying, you know, we have Grahastas who are already Vanaprastas, you know, just put a badge on them and they're, okay, now you're a Vanaprastha, but they're Vanaprastas already. So one can move in that direction in the Grahastha Ashram. Then it's a, a, a natural next step. I, in my book, forthcoming book, put your pennies aside and for this book, um, there's a checklist. 
just simple practical steps that you can take if you're a grahasta that move, help you move to the platform of greater detachment um, and freedom. So that means if I'm already maybe 10 or 12 years away from being 50, I maybe don't beget children then. I maybe just save up Amen. money. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> you know, it's, that's like, no. You're going to mess up the plan, right? So that means for these 12 years I have a life of just earning money as a grihasta and I have no kids and that's it. You have kids. You don't just, you don't have new ones. Take, you take care of the ones you have. If you don't need to take care of them, they're, they're on their own, then you can take early vanaprastha, you know, like early retirement. Count yourself lucky. But no, don't, you know, otherwise it's like you're, you're, uh, you've been sentenced to 25 years in, in prison and, uh, you know, 20 years in you punch the warden. <laughs> the warden is the, 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 the chief jail keeper in the, in the jail. So if you're sentenced to a jail, to jail for so many years, don't punch the warden and get sentenced to so many years more. Get out. Don't be a, a the grass just shouldn't follow in the, in the, well, okay, yes. There's a hand here, or there may be other hands elsewhere. One right in front of me. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much. Uh, there's I'm some thinking of it. Devaki uh, Dasi has dedicated a lot of um, attention to this topic, so she's also a good person to speak with about these things. She's done a lot of research and is also writing a book about the Ivana Prastasha. Yes, and she's here. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, there, there are two, two points that some devotees giving lectures against what you said. Mm. One of them, one of them is uh, that this is uh, this system is for karmis. So the attachment for the wife and kids is bad if they are karmis, but for devotees it is good because they are devotees. Okay, let's take the first argument first. This is for karmis, but devotees, their wife and children are all devotees, so this isn't for us. Um, point one, and I could produce the quote for you, Prabhupada said, the young boys and girls in the Hare Krishna movement who are now in family life in the future are expected to become vanaprastas. That, you know, that's like a killer quote right there. The uh, point, point is, is refuted by Prabhupada himself. The second thing is, um, take the example of Kardam Muni. His wife was the daughter of Swayambhuva Manu. She was a highly elevated um, devotee. And his son was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> and he left. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Is, uh, Mother was a great devotee, his wife was exemplary devotee. He left. There's so many examples. Anyway, we are not saying you have to leave your wife. She can stay as a voluntary assistant. Just get out of family life. Thank you, Maharaj. The other thing is, uh, this Varnashram is very good, but it's meant for... We're going quite over time, aren't we? Um, anyone who has other commitments, please feel free to leave. And if you're in charge here, feel free to stop me. <laughs> okay, 
Yes. But it's meant for other yugas. In Kali Yuga, it, it is not working. So no, the, this is bogus. If you wanted to make a case which Prabhupada doesn't really accept, you have a Shastric case for in Kali Yuga, there's no sannyas. There's a, there's a quotation. Four things are forbidden in Kali Yuga. One of them is sannyas. So if you want to come and make the argument that sannyas is forbidden in Kali Yuga, fine, good. But unless you have a quote that says, in Kali Yuga, Vanaprastha life is forbidden, get lost. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> and uh, maybe last one you said uh, you can stay with your wife but you leave uh, family life what does it mean stop having sex family life means especially sex life yes uh, the Vanaprastha life that Prabhupada says is like the I think he uses the term by a medium but anyway it, it's the intermediate stage between sannyas, complete detachment from family life, and grahastha life, in which you have your wife, children, family affairs, all the, you know, all the trimmings, all the, the stuff that goes with family life. It's in the middle. So it's the, an ashram for detachment. When you get married, you start building up, right? You, 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 you start a, a business, or you, you, you start a job, you get a career, you, you earn some money, you build your network, you uh, develop your skills, you do all sorts of things, you, you, you buy a house, you, you, uh, I mean, you do all these things to build up. Right? You build it, you, buy, you know, buy stuff for your house, you, then you, you, you have children, you, you, you build up. Vanaprastha life means wind down. You figure out how to build it up, now figure out how to wind it down. Don't be like Abhimanyu. He knew how to get into the truck review, but he didn't know how to get out. We should get out. So it's, it's winding down. The theme of, of Vanaprastha Ashram, wind down the, detach, the attachment, wind down the, you know, get rid of your needless stuff, get rid of your needless occupations and engagements, and focus on going back to Godhead because that's the goal of human life. Focus on devotional service, focus on hearing and chanting, focus on preaching, focus on the real business of life, which for so many years you complained, I had no time, I couldn't, I, da, 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 da. now you do, but accept it. It's a blessing, take it. There's an expression, anyway, we, we don't have to mess with expressions. Um, yeah. This lady here. Thank you. Where will you be able to purchase your upcoming book? When will you be able to purchase? No, no where? <coughs> where? Like. Where? <coughs> everywhere but it's 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 not I haven't finished writing it yet that's the problem but um, if you go to YouTube oh blessed YouTube um, I did a seminar on this which is on I think my YouTube channel called the Vanaprasta adventure which is the proposed title for the book and you can see you can get there a, a, a pretty good outline of, of most of what's intended for the book. Thank you. I don't sign the YouTube videos, but on the other hand, they're free. On the subject of your books, what about the Kirtan Standards book? That's, an act of, that's actually written. 90% of it is already online on my website, jswami.info. Um, so I've been posting it in installments, and it's in active production now. We're getting in design stage and then layout and so on. I hope to have it out within the next month or so. Oh, Four thank months. you. Yeah, because I was with you a year ago. You, I thought it was finished at that time. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a
lousy production manager. So okay. Putting so that in charge. Kirtan standards very important and uh, much needed. I hear some people telling me. Here I've seen only really good kirtans, but some places we have deviations. Strange creatures. <laughs> Okay, um, shall we stop here? We're at 9.30, and I think we were supposed to stop at 9, 9.15. Of course, we started late, but I think we can stop here. Yes? Yes. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Samaveta Bhakta Brindaki. Jai. Gaur Pramanande.